Happy holidays, everybody. And like we say around here at Vortex, nothing celebrates the holidays like talking about some of our fine cartridges, one of which we have before us right now, the 44 Meg. Now, gentlemen, back when I was a youth, Mm. my mental perception of the 44 Meg was like it might as well be a bazooka. Like if you if you would have said, what is more powerful, a, a 450 Nitro Express or the 44 Meg? I'd been like, oh no, 44 Meg, easy. Now I think that what uh, I guess at least in my mind, like I said, I was a, a young kid, popular popularized by some popular movies at the time. Dirty Harold, the most powerful handgun in the world. Yep. Did this come from popular request? Uh, by listeners, or what do we just? Uh, was this one more like, "Hey, this is a great one"? Let's I'd do have it. to go back. I think this one. Pro- I think it was a request. Okay. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Dirty Harry, and like you know, my neighbor had a forty-four meg lever gun, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like you know, you could shoot stuff that's light years away with that thing, <laughs> which really not the case. But it's still a darn fine mm. and good cartridge. There you go. mm-hmm. Good censorship. This thing is, I'm I actually don't be- know. I'm getting I don't better. Know, I don't know anything about this, but good thing we have Ryan to enlighten us. It traces its roots from a very, 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 very old cartridge. A special cartridge. Uh, well, even older than that. But I see what you did there, Mark. Oh. Um, in its center fire form, yes, the 44 special, but way back when, this bullet diameter and whatnot was found in a rimfire cartridge. 44 what? rimfire. Whoa. You're going way back in time. Oh, yeah. We're going way back. We're going back to 1860, 1866, somewhere in there. Holy mackerel, jumping the time machine. Mm-hmm. And then as time progressed, we got rid of that archaic rim fire priming. We went to a center fire primer, mm-hmm. to stronger guns, companion cartridges, wheel guns, lever guns, enter the 44 Smith & Wesson Special. Mm-hmm. Uh, an endearing cartridge, one still around to this day. But there was a um, famous gun writer, gunsmith, hunter, Elmer Keith. Elmer Keith wanted more. Elmer Keith had an outhouse at his house. I think the distance was 640 yards, if I remember the story right. And by golly, he'd shoot at that thing every day with a handgun. <laughs> <laughs> and he got hit in it. I think that he is uh, the most responsible person for this cartridge, um, Elmer Keith. And this is uh, 1956? Was that the year? Oh, boy. I thought Come I wrote on, that Prince. down. What are you I still know. in the sixth creed or How what? Do not do that? Wake up. Somebody fact check me. Uh, the 44 Remington Magnum is the 44 Smith & Wesson Special stretched and um, juiced up to about what you could get out of a Smith & Wesson um, or a Ruger single action or a Colt single action without getting insane. Mm. And uh, this is where we end up. Uh, the 44 Remington Magnum. Commercialized standardized, and, and one of the most iconic uh, Magnum revolver cartridges. Does a damn fine job in a lever gun, too. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's just a great all-around hunting cartridge. Well, and it would, you know, uh, sometimes we talk about these uh, states that have integrated straight walls sure. into Charles, their yeah. deer season, yep. so this could be a viable option for that. Yep. Fits the bill, huh? Yep. Now, what... What capabilities are we talking about out of this thing? Obviously, we're 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 looking at very specifically. If you're not watching on YouTube, we're looking at the Hornady Lever Revolution part, uh, loadings here, which are unique and special mm-hmm. in what they can do. They yes. actually sort of uh, they they kind of give a little bit of that modernity. Oh, why do I keep? Why does that word keep trying to come I, out of my mouth? Because it's a word now, Jim. But yeah, that's the FTX. So yeah, I mean that would be like the a perfect option if you had like a lever gun, yeah. Or if you really want to snooze up your revolver, mm. this is a great load. Why would that snooze up your revolver? Just because it's a uh, more more aerodynamic, aerodynamic projectile. Okay. Um, they've got the velocities dialed um, on these things. They're hyper accurate. I shoot these out of my uh, Magnum Research BFR from time to time, and they shoot famously. Um, so capability, you yeah. ask. I think in a lever gun, like if you had yourself a Marlin 1894. Yeah. Um, and you had it set up correctly. This is this is not an this is not a slouch at 150 yards on a deer. Okay. It what, would be certainly doable. What other straight wall 
lever gun cartridges would be be comparing it to? In its class, I think it would be fair to put it up against, say, a forty five Colt. Um, you can get some lever guns in four fifty four Casual, which is a completely different animal. Um, but, and maybe that isn't that fair. Um, 41 Remington Magnum, 357 Magnum. Sure. Going back to your year, Ryan, um, I think you kind of hit, you kind of split the difference in a way. What it says here on my phone computer, uh, 44 Magnum began in 1955. The model 29 designation was applied in 1957, which okay. I believe you said 56. 56. So, okay. Um, Does it say anything about Mr. Keith's outhouse on there? No, but it did, like, uh, when I was reading about it, the, yes, he was brought up. I mean, I think he was highly influential. Yeah. In, cause it, it sounds like, and I think you went over this, but you had the 44 special mm-hmm. and just kind of kept snoozing it, snoozing it, snoozing yep. it, and then kind of developed the 44 Meg, and mm-hmm. then with some high levels of encouragement, got gun manufacturers on board with it. Is that fairly accurate? Bingo. Okay. Yep. Um, and it, it, it is a, a phenomenal cartridge. Um, it is probably the best option between like 357 and 454 from uh, possibly anemic to a little bit insane mm. from, from a recoil and performance standpoint as far as like a revolver hunting cartridge goes. There's been some, some modern additions like 480 Ruger, for instance, might be a little bit better option from a, a shootability, ballistic standpoint, but... It has not stood the test of time as well as 44 Remington Magnum has from a, uh, like an availability standpoint or a commonality standpoint or a familiarity standpoint. 44 Rem Mag has just simply stuck. You can get it in a myriad of revolver sizes from what we would expect a full-size hunting revolver. Think like six, eight-inch barrel, um, you know, large frame to even even like a defensive handgun, like a Smith & Wesson Combat Um they even made the, uh, uh, remember the, uh, what the heck was that, sweet defensive handgun they made? Was it the Night Guard? Remember that? Um, 320, 329 PD? I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh. Yeah. Well, so I, I'm thinking of the one, now it was chambered in this? Yeah. When you're thinking of? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of the one that they had and it was a 9 mil and it could carry 8 shots. Oh, n- no. I'm, I'm getting my models confused. They said the word Night Guard. I should have been thinking of the 329 PD. So oh. like ultralight defensive handgun in forty four mag. Yeah. Yeah. Like ultralight um doesn't sound pleasant to me in a forty four mag it's not, pistol. It's not terrible. So I've shot some pretty high test loads out of mine and I've got a Magnum Research BFR, so it's a super heavy gun. Uh-huh. And it's it's pretty handle we can get a handle on it. It's not terrible. I guess I haven't shot one since I was probably a kid. Um, my dad had a Ruger Red Hawk. Yeah, in forty-four. Good. And I just remember that thing just rocking my hand back. I mean, if you were a smaller stature shooter, it's certainly <laughs> a handful. A I mean, it's there's something different about shooting a, a just a hefty recoiling revolver. Yeah. I've now you that, like it? I do love it. I've got that Scandium J frame Whoa, three fifty seven. So I shoot it with the Hornady Critical Defense ammo, and I love it. Whoa. Um. <laughs> This is a great round. There's been some really cool guns chambered in it too. Some some now long gone. I'm looking at you, Ruger. Ruger Deerfield Carbine. 44 mag semi automatic that looks like a 1022. Oh dear. Oh. Yeah. The 7744, a bolt action. Oh. Chambered in 44 Magnum. Is that also a Ruger product? Yep. Awesome. Yep. Some great lever guns gone and passed. Hopefully coming back. Um, of course, you can still get a myriad of revolvers in it. Um, just, a, just awesome cartridge. If mm-hmm. you, uh, when you put it in a rifle, mm-hmm. it generally you get gain a little bit of performance. Certainly, there, yeah. yep, yeah, certainly, and um, exploit it. I, I think where you would hunt with a thirty thirty, you could do very much the same things as you would with a forty four mag. Sometimes maybe even better, without having to twist your arm into insanity and getting a pretty hard recoiling cartridge like a four forty four Marlin, um, which is like the XL or XXL version of this, mm. or a forty five seventy or something like that. You're going to get a smaller form factor on the gun. If you look at like an 1894 Marlin and you look at like a, an 1895 Marlin, they're two very different guns. Um, so you get this nice, portable, handy little lever gun um, that's certainly bringing enough to the table to be a viable hunting round. I like this. Yeah. This is cool. Yep. You got to look up the combat magnums. Okay. Yep. Lever guns are so awesome, man. I just, this looks like a, this also just looks like a French bulldog. 
<laughs> this particular cartridge. It's stout. It's, it's a good... Small d- it's and a stout. Cardio is not its thing. No. <laughs> doesn't have to be. But if it needs to run through the screen door, it's going through. Yeah. Yeah. Couple, oh, <laughs> couple interesting things. Um... Which okay, I would have to think that the long it's got a longer case than the forty four special. Yep. Correct. Now I would have to think that would add, or in my mind, I'm like that would add powder capacity. Absolutely. But I also read that wasn't necessarily the reason for like they wanted to make sure that people couldn't fit it in their forty four special. Sure. So if you had a if you had a, a wheel gun chambered in forty four special. And it wasn't up to, like, well, let's say it was an old well, I guess, gun. And you never want to, you know, huck right. something in, something that it's not meant for, right? Sure. But, right, yeah. Um, yep. It, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to put that in there. Things could go awry. Because, now, what's convenient? The, um, because they weren't made to withstand, like, the pressures, Correct. right? Yep. Yeah. What's convenient is if you have a forty-four mag and you don't want to subject yourself to that kind of recoil, you buy forty-four specials and you put it in your forty-four mag. So it's like the three fifty-seven thirty-eight special thing? Bingo. Uh, Very cool. I like that. I like it. Absolutely. I like the punishment. The other interesting thing, which I found surprising, is the bullet diameter is actually 0.44. 0.429. I've been deceived all these years. But how silly does that sound? What's a 429 banged him? That's weird. Yeah, it doesn't sound as good. No. 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 I've got a little, uh, in one of my printouts, Jim, I might as well use these damn things. You might as well. Uh, What's with you? Cursing like a sailor. Says, though, marketed. Poop, poop mouth. Those damn marketing folks. <laughs> poop mouth. I can't uh, believe you say that, Ron. Um, those damn marketing folks. All those, although marketed as a forty four caliber, the forty four Magnum, Magnum and its parent, forty four Special, are actually point four two nine dash point four three zero. Oh, like two. Yep. Um. The designate the point four four designation is a carryover from the early measurements of healed bullets used in the late nineteenth century. Hmm. A healed bullet that's like got a think of a twenty two LR. Right. Yep. There you have it. I we've I've, been lied to, Jim. We have. We have. I still like 40, it. Forty four has a better ring. It does. It certainly does. I find myself still, still trying to. I lo- I love the idea of a companion gun yes. setup. You know, and and I I I've tried the nine mil carbine thing. I, when I say I tried, I've sort of done it, and it's a little bit. It can be a bit finicky at times. Granted, that's because I tried to build my own. Um, but uh, then, of course, you have like a nine mil pistol. But like the thing is, is that now when you get when you try and do the nine mil thing, you know because of what else is available out there. You know, like the ARs chambered in two twenty three or six five Creed more. Like you know that you're limited yep. right like i when i pick up a nine mil carbine i'm like okay it's great it shoots the same thing as my pistol but i i can't shoot as far as i could with a 223 ar effectively uh or a 6.5 or something like that whereas back in the day these guys who were toting these bad boys around they were like oh no this out of my lever gun that i'm i'm up there in terms of what is possible at like distance and i can stick it in my pistol and mm, and, yep. and being mm-hmm. a shootout up close too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they had it all, and now when you try the companion gun, I mean nobody's making like a good two twenty three pistol, <laughs> uh, you know, or six five Creedmoor like Yet. like like handgun that you can whip out of a holster. So of course I say pistol, and like everybody with their pistol ARs is like, oh yeah, they do. It's not what I mean, but yeah, and it's kind of a bummer. No, and I, I there's something super. I don't know if it just speaks to the kid in me, whoever always wanted to be a cowboy. Everybody yeah. had a cap gun. Yeah. Everybody have a nice single action. Well, I'll, I'll allow a double action too in this conversation. Um, <laughs> a nice revolver. I'm just going to say that, and then a companion lever gun. I would also allow a 77.44 or a Ruger Deer Phil carbine to enter the conversation as well. Sure. Yeah. You let them enter the, enter the chat. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty big pills with this bad boy. 225 grain in Gosh, this loading. Love it. And you can get bigger. I love I'm it. I'm seeing a, uh, a buffalo bore loading <laughs> here. <laughs> the buffalo bore heavy, yeah. a 340 grainer coming at you 1,425 feet per second. 1,533 foot pounds. Oh. Is that measured oh. out of a carbine? That is. Mm, Ryan, I don't know. That, that is. These are. So I think that is Bernice on the Girl Scouts dodgeball team. 
that buffalo bore heavy. That yeah. is, I think you, you know, I think you might be looking at some, some carbine velocities because, yeah. for contrast, the 225 FTX here is 1410 feet per second. So it could be. Who knows? The buffalo bore stuff is loaded to. I like, mean, it's hot. Plus P but, plus I mean, pressure. That would be like hot, hot, hot. Yeah, it would be very, very uncomfortable to shoot. Feeling hot, hot, hot. This might require some further research. But in fact, it is a versatile cartridge. There are a lot of different bullet styles and bullet weights that you can get into. As I had mentioned earlier, like a 44 special load, you can get what well, you'll see labeled as like cowboy action loads that some people might shoot in, in single action competitions uh, or reenactment. You can chamber them in your 44 rem mag. They also make 44 rem mag cowboy loads. Mm-hmm. Um, Those are usually lighter, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, lighter recoiling. Right. Yep. Right. Um, and then. Because they're shooting so darn fast yeah um and then you can get these full test hunting loads too it's just super cool there, there's something really interesting to me about straight wall cases in general like i buy 45 70 ammunition that's downloaded 405 grain bullet at 1050 to 1150 feet per second depending on the manufacturer and then i can buy some high test mean stuff you know if i get say the barnes factory loading or the hornady factory loadings out of those things and they're just absolutely cooking those things out as as fast as we can safely go with the case the 44 mag allows you to do the same thing with factory options. We talk about feeding mm-hmm. and cartridge design, case design. Yep. And, you know, some of these cartridges, they have their their tapers and their other things. Yep. And, you know, oh, yeah, you got your real sharp shoulder things. And, you know, sometimes you got feeding issues, yada, yada. And then you look at these. <laughs> and people run them through lever guns. And at it's, a it's high like rate of speed. a high rate of speed. Yeah. The harder you run it, the better it gets. Yep. And I'm like. What do we fuss around with it feeding so much? When, like a lipstick tube, you can jam into a chamber just fine at any rate of speed practically, and it'll work. That's what it was designed for, to, just, work, to work in tandem. It just works. Yep. Out of a tubular magazine especially, or in the case of Ruger, a rotary magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Love them. There you go, Jim. I, I mean, love them so much. When you get your rifle in 44 meg, get these bullets, and you'll optimize... The rifle, and you can shove them right in your pistol. I will. Of, of all the cartridges we've talked about this this particular holiday season, this is the one that I think I'm actually going to do something about. I'm Uh-oh. probably going to get something in 44 mag. Ooh. I'm, I'm I talked, like the sounds I'm, of that. Merry I'm Christmas, talked up James. on it. I'm talked up on it. Man, I did the scope this gun on my my official deer gun, the 308 Browning BLR, and I love that thing. But, man, this would be, this would be good. Although There's, it's like this wouldn't be... The Browning BLR in 308 is, is, I could take that out west, I could shoot a deer at, you know, some hundreds of yards or something like that. This, I'd, I'd feel a little bit more uh, handicapped, if you will. Not handicapped, that's the wrong word, but I'd feel a little bit more, like, uh, limited. limited. In, yeah. yeah, it's a 150-yard gun in, out of 11. Yeah, yard. exactly. It's, it's cool. Great, yeah. I There's just it, something you like about it. I think and you it's, I mean, it's, it an, it's an iconic it's cartridge. Let me ask I you this, it. Ryan. I, I don't want to go long-winded here, but, like, I feel like... Uh, in American culture, I mean, the 44 meg is like iconic. Like we're talking, like yep. said, Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, just like it's got you know just a very strong history here. Mm-hmm. Is it like that other place? Is it popular anywhere else? Good yeah, question. So that that's a tough one because how many other countries allow you to have handgun cartridges or handguns in general? So our friends in Canada, that has recently changed. Um, our friends in Europe, that has maybe never been a thing for them. Um, lever guns are another story, but lever guns are uniquely American. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. From, yeah. from like a popularity standpoint. What so, were other countries using around our time, our heyday of lever guns? Were they just using bolt action rifles? Bolt actions, single shots, muskets, muzzle loaders. There's lever guns out and about though. Yeah. I mean, they certainly made it to other places. Yeah. Um, or they came from other places and they had their own iterations of this. Revolving rifles. Wasn't that in? Uh, wasn't in the Last Samurai? Didn't they bring over a bunch of lever guns for the Japanese army to fight the samurai with? No. Were those lever guns? What were those? No, they probably would have been shooting Springfield muskets. Was it muskets? Yeah. Or rolling I blocks. Christ- uh, no, not Tom Cruise. I almost said Christian Bale. He he, he may have he did thing. he did he showcased the eighteen ninety four or eighteen ninety two Winchester. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Oh, that's right. But then there was the kid that he was going to make. Shoot at me! Yeah. And then he was trying to do yeah. the musket stuff. Okay. But yeah. his his demonstration in that was a uh, uh, 1892. That would have been chambered in like 4440. Oh, that's a cool gun. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Off topic. Yeah. But on topic. So 
So are we all getting 44 megs then? Well, I have one. Oh, I mean, right. I'm already Ryan's getting a, I, a step ahead. It's only, yeah. it's only I need, us two. I need a one. nice, you know, I don't have a double action. You just, didn't you talk crap about double action? Like, yeah. Like, well, I'm just saying, I don't Six know. minutes ago? Yeah, I've been thinking about getting a combat magnum. Oh. Yeah. All and right. I'd like a lever gun. I'd like to find me one of them. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Good. That's what I know. Good. Good for you. It's a cool cartridge. I like it. I kind of like them all. Mm-hmm. But I do like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Folks out there, do you have a 44 mag? Do you live in a state where you've hunted deer with your 40? I mean, actually, you could do it anywhere, but, you know, it's kind of some states that might make more sense with, yep. you know. Yeah. Um, I want to hear about it. Mm-hmm. Can you convince Jim and I to get one? Ooh. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, done. Oh. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, me. I don't know. You're, you're the only me. one that sounds like left. Comment, get one. Comment. <laughs> and, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, guys, happy holidays. This is the conclusion. This is the last of our holiday cartridge talks for the season. It won't be the last cartridge talk for the year because we love them. We hope you love them. Well, it'll probably be the last one for 2022. 2023 though that's Plenty true more. i guess it probably will it will be the last one of the 2022 year i was thinking I didn't, sorry. within the next 365 days we're going to do some more of these things so don't never fear um yeah well technically um i get it i get it okay happy holidays we hope they treated you well we hope you got that new gun for christmas that you've just been drooling over and uh yeah thanks everybody for listening bye catch you on the next one